The procedure of example 3 can be applied, applied to the general quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 to produce the following formula for its solutions. This is the quadratic formula. You should have seen this already, so it should be nothing new. The solution is the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a does not equal 0, are given by the quadratic formula. x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that over 2a. Now again, in example 4 here, we're going to be using the quadratic formula. So here we go. First things first, the first thing we have to do is get everything to one side and set it equal to 0. So 3x squared minus 6x minus 5 is equal to 0. That means 3 is A, B is negative 6, and C is negative 5. Now to put this in the quadratic formula, the opposite of B plus or minus, that's x equals, plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times A times C. All of that over 2a. So when we simplify this, be 6 plus or minus the square root of 36, and then 12 times 5 is 60 over 6. Simplifying further, We have this. Now, as we keep going, 96 is divisible by 16. So, really, what's going to end up happening is when we simplify this even further, we'll end up having 6 plus or minus 4 squared of 6 over 6, which will simplify to 1 plus or minus, it'll end up being 2 squared of 6 over 3. There's your answer. I know it looks complicated, that's why it's a lot harder to do this version than it would be to complete the square. Again in B, one of having x is equal to, oh, sorry, let's change that a little bit. x squared plus 8x minus 2 is equal to 0. You should be able to pick out that a is 1, b is 8, and c is negative 2. So x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus b squared, which is 64, minus 4 times a times c, all of that over 2 times a. Simplify this, negative 8 plus or minus 64 plus 8 is 72 over 2. Now, 72 can be broken down into square root of 36 and square root of 2, so 6 square root of 2 over 2, which will simplify to negative 4 plus or minus 3 square root of 2. Now, there are four basic ways to solve quadratic equations algebraically. Factoring in example one, extracting square roots like we did in example two, completing the square, which is like example three, and using the quadratic formula that we just did in example four. Now, approximating solutions of equations graphically. A solution of the equation x cubed minus x minus one equals zero is the value of x that makes the value of y equals x cubed minus x minus one equal to zero. 
Example 5 illustrates a built-in procedure on graphic calculators to find such values of x. So solve each equation graphically. So again, we're going to put this into our calculator. x to the third minus x minus 1. We're going to graph that. As you can see by the graph, there is only one answer. So we're going to do second trace, use our zero finder. There's my left thumb, my right thumb is there. About 1.32. What we'll do, we'll take a picture of that. And there's our answer. Now again for B, we'll put this equation in. X to the third plus X squared plus 2X minus 3. Again, it looks like there's only one zero. There's your answer at about 0.84. When solving equations graphically, we usually get approximate solutions, not exact solutions. We'll use the following agreement about accuracy in this book. For applications, round to a value that is reasonable for the context of the problem. For example, round to two decimal places for money. For all others, round to two decimal places unless otherwise directed. Now, the table feature on graphing calculators provides a numerical zoom-in procedure that we can use to find accurate solutions of equations. We illustrate this procedure in example six using the same equation of example 5. So again, in your calculators, I want you to put in x to the third minus x minus 1. We should see and understand that the 0 is still about 1.32. Now, to get to your table, it's actually pretty easy. Press second graph, and we have a table. Okay. Now, generally your table should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever it is. You see there that your 0 looks like it's between 1 and 2, which makes sense. So what you have to do in order to figure this out using a table, you press second window and you get to this. Your table starts. Well, since my 0 is between 1 and 2, I want my table start to be 1. Go down to the change in table and make that a point one. Second table. And you have your table. Now you should be able to see then that your zero is somewhere between 1.3 and 1.4. Go back to your table set. Make it say 1.3 and then 0 0.01 for your change in table. Go back to your table. You should see then that the change in the y1 column between 1.32 and 1.33, that's where your change is. So again, go back to table set, start at 1.32, go to 0 0.001. And there you can see your change in table is between 1.324 and 1.325. Go to your table set. Start 1.324.0001. 0, 0, 0, and you should be able to see them. Your change is going to happen between 1.3247 and 1.3248. Go to your table set. We'll 
we'll do it one more time to show you. And you'll be able to see then that 1.3247 is going to be your zero. For the next problem, change your table start to zero, and this will be one again for the change of table. X squared minus X minus one. We're going to graph it. Okay. Just do the positive one. We're doing this more for the working with tables as opposed to finding both zeros. Just, just use the positive one right now. So it looks like our zero is between one and two. So go to your table set, start at one, make this point one. So if you look there, it looks like your change from negative to positive is 1.6 and 1.7. So change the table set, or change it to 1.6. I'll go 0 0.01. And it looks like the change is going to be between 1.61 and 1.62. 1.61 there, 0 0.001 here. And you should be able to see that the change is between 1.618 and 1.619. Okay, there we have that, 0 0.0001. And again, you should be able to see that your change is going to be right here, 1.618 and 1.6181. So there we have it, 0 0.0001. It looks like your zero is going to be at 1.618. That's where you can see it. Now in this exploration, it wants you to show the table and the zero finding feature on your calculator are the same. I want you to do this on your own and I'll check it in class tomorrow. Make sure you get it done, I will be checking. Solving equations by finding intersections. Sometimes we can rewrite an equation solving graphically by finding the points of intersection of two graphs. A point AB is a point of intersection of two graphs if it lies on both graphs. We illustrate this procedure with the absolute value equation in example 7. Solve each equation graphically by finding intersections. Confirm your answer algebraically. Here's what we're going to have. So what it wants you to do, in your y equals, it wants you to put two, the absolute value of 2x minus 1. In order to put absolute value in, you've got to press the math button, which is under your alpha button and left of your x button. So press math. Go over to number. So use your arrow keys, scroll over to number. Absolute value is your first option. 2x minus 1. You go down, you put 6. We want our standard window here. So there's what we have. We want to find our intersection. So second trace. You want to go down to 5, which is intersect. You want to put your cursor close to where you think the intersection point is. And press Enter, Enter, Enter. Your intersection is negative 2 and a half and 6. So x is about negative two and a half. There's one answer. Your second answer. Is at three and a half. 
Now, to confirm this algebraically, what we're going to do, 2x minus 1 equals 6, 2x minus 1 equals negative 6. So we're going to have 2x equals 7, x equals 7 over 2, which is 3 and a half. And here, 2x equals negative 5, x equals negative 5 over 2, which is negative 2 and a half. There is your solution confirmed algebraically. So these are your correct answers. Let's make these small here. So we have more room to work for the next part. Now for part B, we have the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 4. So here's what we have. Again, we'll have two answers here. Let's use our intersect feature. x equals negative 5. It's not going to be about. x is going to equal negative 5. And 3. To solve these algebraically, x plus 1 equals 4, x plus 1 equals a negative 4. It should be fairly straightforward here. x equal 3, x equal negative 5. So there is your confirmation algebraically. If you should have any questions, you need to let me know immediately in class or come before school or after school.